Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here with some more Neverwinter gameplay. Neverwinter is of course the upcoming free-to-play MMORPG from Cryptic Studios. Uh, just the other day we took a look at this game in a first 40 video. Today what I'll be doing is we'll actually be looking at the very first dungeon in the game. This is known as the Cloak Tower. And not only will I be showing you the dungeon, but I'm also going to be talking with you about tanking, because that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Uh, so before we can talk about tanking, the first thing we really have to do is talk about my abilities and specifically what's going on. Uh, that's going to be nice and easy at the beginning here while we're just clearing some trash. So uh, let's talk about first my AO my range taunt, is uh, I guess what I'll call it. Uh, my tab ability basically marks a target, and what it does is it does damage over time to them until they start attacking me. The great thing about this, though, is it's got a decent range, so I'm able to essentially engage in enemies from far away and get them to attack me at first. Now, obviously, in being a tank, that's a uh, primary goal. Now, be beyond the, the initial engagement, so I've got that, there's also this charge that I can do to run into people. Uh, but I think the best way that I've found to open up is with that ranged mark. Um, because you, it's best to use your charge to sort of pull pull targets off of your healers or your DPS or stuff like that if they happen to get away from you. Um, now beyond my, again, that initial engagement, let's talk about the damage mitigation uh, plus the threat or the taunting of targets. Okay, so damage mitigation, I do my blocking with shift, which brings up my guard. Uh, now while I'm blocking, you'll notice a guard meter on the left-hand side. It's that little blue thing there. And that is going to show the amount of guard that I have left. Now guard is used up when I absorb blows, but I can also fill up the guard by doing special abilities like my shield slam or my AoE damage plus taunt. Uh, so the idea is to use your guard to absorb damage and uh, fill it up as much as possible because it basically works like the more damage you take the more guard is removed and obviously you want that filled up because if you lose it then you actually can't block basically is how it works so you want to try to make sure that your guard is full all the time so but in, in between blocking attacks um, you want to be doing things to fill up your guard and again there are certain abilities my area of effect taunt which is the e ability right there that fills up my guard uh, plus my shield slams which of which there are basically two varieties which i'll explain to you a little bit further in just a moment first grab these guys here okay so getting enemies to attack me again we've got that ranged marking with this and then the AoE taunt with E. You're gonna notice an exclamation point, which as far as I can tell now, that is basically indicator of aggro. There's an exclamation point, it means, hey, they're they're focused on you. Um, now, besides that AoE taunt, that is on the cooldown. Another way you get people to attack you is while your guard is up, you have a second set of abilities. There's a stab ability where you stab over your shield, and there is a shield slam ability. Now, the stab ability is supposed to get people to attack you. It's supposed to, I suppose, increase your threat. I, if we want to put MMO vocabulary behind it, I believe that is what it's supposed to do. Um, I can show you the actual verbiage on it, which I will do in a minute, but I'm going to do my stabbing. Now, that is going to use up some of my guard, but if it's getting people to attack me, then heck, it's worth it. Uh, also, my R, so here we go. We've got the... Uh, the Knight's Challenge, that forces someone to attack me. It makes it also so that they and myself take increased damage while we engage in combat with each other. So that's another way we can get, I can get one primary target to be like, hey, you need to attack me, you have to attack me, you really don't have a choice. It's really cool because it does like this death stare. I'm going to actually do it on that guy over there. Watch this. I'm gonna hit my R, and we're going to unlock in this one-on-one -on -one combat that I'm like looking right at his face like he must attack me <laughs> it's pretty cool I, I, I like it but now with all that stuff in play that is basically that is basically the combat now I've also got my daily abilities there's two of them I've got an AoE stomp uh, plus a, a heal over time that, that's my one and my two and that is all done as I mentioned in the prior videos you get your daily abilities by filling up your uh, your action points and then once that is full you just fill it up by engaging in combat and then once it's full you can do it so I can do my uh, my massive heal I'll hit my two and that's gonna put some crazy heal over time the other one is an AoE stomp that does damage and increases my damage and stuff but really not that big of a deal I'm gonna take this target over here off of the healer standing all the way in the back 
All right, so th those are the basic uh, mechanisms that are at play here when it comes to tanking. What am I doing? Get out of that. All right, let's go ahead and follow the trail and make our way through the dungeon here. Now, the, the very early stages, you're just pretty much seeing trash mobs. Um, nothing nothing too riveting. We're going to be getting up to a, a, the first boss fight very soon. There's a few boss fights in this dungeon. I think the total is three. It's either three or four. I've ran this a couple of times, but I just can't recall off the top of my head right now. Uh, regardless, we'll be seeing it for sure soon enough. So something that I found when it comes to trying to hold aggro, again, you know, you run in, you do your AoE stomp, that's a great start. But then putting up your guard and doing your stab over the shield is another way to, um, and let me show you the exact verbiage here. So stab your foe over your shield, taunting them to engage you. So evidently it taunts, or it, that's what I assume based on that on that vocabulary. So that's that's been my, after I, I move in, I do my AoE stomp, maybe a cleave or two, and if it looks like someone's pulling aggro, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that stabbing attack, or just do my R ability, which is that death gaze to force them to attack me head on. Okay, so I'm going to absorb some stuff there. And once we get to a boss fight, I think I can really show you how the whole guard thing comes into play when when you're trying to fill it up and you're also trying to uh, make sure you don't lose too much. In fact, it's almost it's almost wise to just sidestep heavy, heavy attacks that are incoming that you see telegraphed ahead of time. Because if you sit in them, you're just going to use up a ton of your guard, and what's the point of that if it means you're not going to be able to block uh, incoming attacks? And, you know, since they, since a lot of those telegraph attacks, the enemies will stand in place. Like, look at that. Look how much gu of my guard was used up. Now, I'm going to try to show you here what happens when you use it all the way up. So I'm going to get these guys to attack me, and hopefully they diminish my guard completely here. So what happens is now I have not enough guard. I can't block. I'm holding down shift, and I can no longer block. It, it basically breaks your guard. It breaks your ability to guard. Uh, if you lose it. So that's that's why it's important not to lose it, because you can't do it again until the bar, you basically have to wait for it to refill up again. Which obviously that's that's all that amount of time that you can't mitigate incoming damage with the exception of avoiding it. And um, yeah, it also means you can't use those guard specific abilities, which is the stab plus this uh, little shield slam as well. So yeah, it definitely Guard mitigation is probably going to be the most important thing when it comes to tanking in this game. I'm sorry, <laughs> not mitigation, but uh, making sure that you're paying attention to the guard and, and keeping it filled and not losing too much of it in combat. And it's just funny to think, but it's it seems like it's going to be a smart and viable solution to actually avoid certain attacks. Although I guess that's the case with tanking in any other game. You don't always want to sit in every single attack that's thrown your way, so... Okay, I don't think any of the stuff I could be even using here. Yeah, I've, there's been no gear dropping for me so far. I have been pretty lucky, though, in uh, prior runs, I've gotten quite a significant amount of tanking gear. So, really, really helping me out here and mitigating the incoming damage. Okay, we got a guy right down here. We can charge right at him. Oh, I love it. That's, I, I think, one of my favorite thing about all warrior classes and games, at least ones that include charge, is the existence of charge. But it's so awesome. I love charge. Love it, love it, love it. Speaking of charge, let's go over here. Try to get these guys off of my healers and such. Now you notice when loot pops up, there's two things you can do. I think it's, uh, there's three things you can do. You can either do need, greed, or pass, and you can either try to click on them with your mouse, or you can just do shift one, two, and three. And most people will greed unless they need it. It seems like people have been fairly good about that. I haven't seen a lot of people needing things that they actually can't use. All right, so here we go, first boss fight here. Macrid the Foul. And since this, I'm assume, I'm chalking this up to the fact that it's the first dungeon, but things have been very straightforward and simplistic in terms of these engagements so far. Uh, but again, since it is the first dungeon within the game, I'm just assuming that that's the reason why. Oh, it took a lot of damage there. We got some uh, some incoming baddies, so we're gonna try to pull these guys off of. Okay, I need to heal up big time. So I use my action points there for my heal over time ability. We're gonna do some stabbing here on this guy. And actually, I think, uh, yeah, the main guy's dead. Now we're just dealing with 
trash mob. Yeah, the main guy's dead here. So these are just the mobs that he sort of summoned in. But I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. It's and Most of these boss fights have pretty much been chalked up to, um, you know, main guy and he summons minions. <laughs> it's basically what it's been so far. Let's take a quick look at this. Can't use that. It's not my class. We're going to greed and seal of the line. I think everyone pretty much has been greeting those as well. And let's pick a flower. Oh, nice. I have a star flower. Alright, so as that rolls, we're going to go ahead and move forward with the dungeon. Those people hopefully come and join me. That'd be good. <laughs> Don't want to fight everything by myself. I've been quite enjoying tanking. I think with, uh, you know, with this sort of combat that is uh, action-focused, I think tanking in this sort of game is uh, much more enjoyable than hotkey rotation tanking. I definitely enjoy that. I, I did tanking in Star Wars The Old Republic. I did it in World of Warcraft. And um, I, I definitely find that tanking in this sort of a combat style is a lot more fun. For me personally. All these things I say are personal opinion in any of my videos. Keep that in mind. Everyone's entitled to their own. <laughs> I say that so much. It's true, though. I think people seem to forget that. They get so infuriated when someone states their opinion. and say, hey, man, you can have a different opinion, and that's cool. That's just, like, your opinion, man. <laughs> One of my favorite movies of all time. All right, let's see here. We got something coming. Stomp. Get these guys on me from the get-go. Yeah, wonderful. So I, I really only use my gaze, my knight's challenge uh, for large targets. In force threat, I use every every uh, every engagement pretty much. Whoa, the camera's going all sorts of crazy. And then my marking, <clears throat> which I would like to uh, read that to you, so or at least uh, put it up on screen for you to take a look at. So we'll do that in one second. Get this guy paying attention to me. So, ooh, no, we got guys coming. Hold up. We'll take a look at it in a moment. I'm going to make sure I'm trying to take this aggro as much as possible. One thing that's uh, kind of bothered me, maybe maybe it is the case that the stab is taunting enough that, that I can actually force these people on me. It hasn't really seemed that it's a straight up, like, I hit that and they automatically attack me. So, okay, that's just, uh, like, a resource or whatever. Focus on me, thank you. All right, so I'd like to show you my tab ability um, quickly here. So here it is. Uh, mark the target, the challenge to, to, to have their physical mitigation diminished and they take damage until I attack them. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And that's what I basically throw on people from, from afar to get them to attack me initially. It's also one of those things that's so interesting because I've spent so much time you know, talking about the tanking here. And uh, it's an early game dungeon, so re real legitimate tanking. Pretty much in every MMO I've ever played, and, and you know, I, I mentioned the two most recent ones that I've played the most, which was the Old Republic and uh, World of Warcraft, but that doesn't mean I haven't dabbled in other ones, because I certainly have, at the very least, played through betas. And <clears throat> even the ones I've played in a short amount of time, like the beginning dungeons are always so easy that it's really not, you know, what, whatever, anyone, a rogue can tank. For example, you know what I mean? It's, it's just usually pretty simple stuff and not too difficult. Okay, so we're going to head over here because there is another boss down this way that we are going to engage. So hopefully these guys come with me. I don't know if they know about this guy, but Throg the Ravenous, which you can technically skip as far as I know. You can just keep going up there and that continues you through the dungeon. Um, but we are going to engage him. Okay. My puppy! His name is Taffy, by the way, if you think that's a strange name. <clears throat> well, listen here. Taffy is the name of my mother's Yorkshire Terrier, the dog I grew up with. So, I love Taffy. And any dog I have, any dog companion I have in ever, any game will forever be known as Taffy because of my love for that, for that puppy. Okay, so apparently these people really didn't know about this guy because I am the only one down here. And my shield is now broken. I should have avoided that attack. I shouldn't have gone straight in. So I'm going to have to wait for my guard to get back up before I can uh, do any more blocking. Luckily, that actually uh, 
It's actually back up right now. My dog's taking some major damage. I'm trying to grab these guys real quick here. And we're gonna stab this guy a bit until he attacks me. There we go. My stamina hasn't fully recharged yet, actually. So it has to, because it, because it broke, it needs to recharge all the way to the beginning before I can use it again. So I haven't been able to block. Until that blue bar goes all the way back up, I cannot block. And actually, my my puppy's down, fortunately enough. Okay, so it looks like that's back up. So yes, my guard is available now. So I can do my guard stabbing abilities. Get these guys to attack me. All right, wonderful. And let's go ahead and res Taffy. Get up, puppy. I love you. Okay, and looks like there's a... Uh, stuff on the ground here. Okay, so many arrows armor, obviously that's not for me. Alright, wonderful. So a nice little boss there, and uh, we can make our way back up this way. That is so cool that you can jump. So many times when they, when, you know, to get from one place to another, they, you're usually taking like a ramp. I like that, I like that you can use a little jump in action to get up there. Obviously you could just take the other way that we went down as well, but Anywho, let's keep going. Dungeon is not much longer, uh, relatively short, usually taking me between 20 and 30 minutes. Uh, probably because of all this chatter and I'm tanking a little bit slower than usual, this one might be a little bit longer than the 20 minutes, but we'll see. Lol! Oh, don't fall down there, Force. That would be... People will be laughing at you. I'd be laughing at myself. And these guys, these silly guys, what are they doing? my two. Heal myself up a little bit here. And engage with these fools. And now finally, so yeah, that like that, that like slamming of red destruction there. Try to walk out of that whenever possible. Really no reason, to, absolutely no reason to sit in it. I mean, the only, the only real blocks that's, I feel like it's worthwhile to, uh, the only real attacks I feel like it's worthwhile to stand in front of and and block it are going to be the basic telegraph, uh, basic attacks that they, that, they, that they do. Not their specialties, they're just massive. You'll just lose your guard so fast, it's absurd. And sort of a waste, because as you saw in that last boss battle, if that happens, man, you're SOL in terms of uh, blocking. Okay, so we're gonna... Get this guy, hopefully, nice and pissed off at me. Well, it's safe to say that he's mad no matter what I do. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, good lord. Hello. Alright, so we're gonna try to take out these range guys first. They're just such a nuisance. They're just throwing damage at my healers all day, you know. There he is. I said that. I know there's a caster somewhere. He just did his little range thing there. Let's get him to focus on me with my warrior's gaze. A couple stabs to the face. And that is that. That is that. Okay, so we've made our way now through the caves, and the last little corridor here is going to be like this little prison looking area. And then we'll be up to the final boss, which, like the uh, bosses before him, fairly straightforward. Uh, this one does some... the last boss does a little bit of charging. But the uh, the real danger with him is he summons just a ton of minions. So we'll have to see how my healer is. There have been instances in the past, there's just so many minions. And with my AoE ability having a cooldown, it's... you know, I can't realistically keep on top of them. My cleave doesn't appear to have much threat applied to it, so while it's a nice initial engager and doing some damage, it's not going to guarantee people attacking me. So anyways, the point is that there's a ton of extra minions and uh, it's not always that viable to keep them all on me. So hopefully my healer's up to snuff here. Actually, it looks like there is at least yeah, there's two in this one. Which is good to see. Get over here. You... You, come here, attack me. 
a nice tough guys here. So they're a little frontal cone damage. Oh, stayed out of that one. Beautiful. Yeah, it's just some blocking and back it up a little bit necessary. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I'm really hoping that this isn't going to be one of those games where it's pay to win, you know, because if they if they can do the free to play model correctly, I, man, it's, it's 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 good combat. It's good. It's a, I think it's a nice balance to um, in the first 40 video that I did just prior to this. I talked about the action focus, and I talked about how a lot of MMOs nowadays are going with the action focus. Now this isn't quite as action intense as say a game like Terra. Uh, but nevertheless, it still does have the, the notion of your skill shots, you know, you have to pay attention to who you're attacking, what you're attacking, your positioning, and everything like that. So there is still that element of skill within this game. I don't know that I would say the system's quite as fluid. I even saw someone in the first video uh, relate this combat to Kingdom of Romulo Reckoning, which I just have to outright say it's not. I mean, yes, it's action, but... Kingdom of Zombalore, there's a lot more to it, you know, dodging and everything like that. And I, I believe the the rogue class in this game can do dodging, but it's not like everyone has access to dodge, plus any other innate abilities that they have. And here we go, the final boss of the Cloak Tower, Vonsi Bloodscar. I'm gonna try my best to keep the aggro from her. And once we get all her little minions running into play too and try to take them as well. Something I don't like that they do here is they require everyone to be they require everyone to be at the start of the boss before it begins. But it's an event and it like throws you in there so I guess that does make sense come to think of it. But yeah you have to wait for everyone that's the annoying part having to stand here and wait all right, here we go. Vansi Bloodscar, final boss here of the Cloaked Tower. She is not happy. Let's give her more reason. So yeah, you see she does that little charge there. And that right there, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, if I, standing in that thing cost me so much of my guard. I'll try to refill it now here. Don't want to sit in that at all, and I'm gonna be using my shield bash here to try to. Uh, so here, first wave of little minions. I'm gonna throw an X on her, try to get her to attack me. Otherwise, she's gonna start. She takes massive damage. It's. I know it's over a thousand. It might even be close to, close to two thousand, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. All right, I'm gonna try to keep these little minions off her. Our healers here. And again, there's the X on our friend, making her an unhappy camper. And the gaze, the gaze that forces her to attack me. Actually, this guy's in trouble. AoE stomp, get over here. You silly gooses. See how many? See how many there are? And now she's being all silly. She doesn't like me either. No one likes me right now. There we go, she's dead. But yeah, I mean, again, as you saw, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's an early dungeon, though, so I'm not gonna, I can't judge this game. I can't judge any MMO without playing it for quite a significant amount of time. What I can do is let you know if I'm having fun or not. And I can tell you, in Neverwinter, I'm having fun. It's a fun game. Quite enjoying it. All right, let's take a look at what dropped. Are those good for me? That's exactly what I have already, so I'm going to go with Agreed. If no one else wants it, I'll take it to sell. Otherwise, here you go. And here's some uh, most damage. Here's some just information. Uh, most times fallen. <laughs> I didn't die. Uh, most health points healed. I got top of anything. Most enemies slain. Four slow. <laughs> All right, guys. That does it. Once again, this has been a look at the very first dungeon in... Neverwinter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Also a little bit of talk about tanking in the game. 
Game's pretty fun. I like it. There might be another video or two before the end of this beta weekend. We'll have to see. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.